Hi, welcome to my video. It's about seeing 9-11 or 1234 on clocks frequently. And, of course, seeing them on other items besides clocks. It's, uh, this is a Christian perspective and opinion by James C. I think you'll find this video very informative and very interesting. This video is about, as I said before, seeing 9-11 and 1234 on clocks and other items frequently. This experience has been very unusual and at first very unsettling to me. And from what I've read on the internet, other people have seen 9-11 and other numbers frequently as well. Now this video addresses the situation from a totally Christian perspective, which in my opinion is the only way to address it properly. Now I'll give you some background information on the topic. I started noticing 9-11 on clocks beginning years ago. When it first started, I dismissed it as pure coincidence. However, it kept happening and it got more and more frequent. I noticed it at work, after work, at home. It appeared on clocks, watches, cell phones, computer screens, even the microwave oven clock. One peculiar instance in particular comes to mind. It happened so frequently after work that one day I decided I will not see it on the car clock because I kept seeing it on the car clock so many times after work so I purposely decided not to look at the clock after 9 p.m. when I got off work uh, but that didn't work I decided to get myself some food at a fast food restaurant drive through now while waiting in line at the drive through I looked up and amazingly the car directly in front of me had 9-11 on the license plate I was bewildered and then I realized taking all this into account 9-11 has some strange meaning it just appeared too many times to be a coincidence. And to make matters even more interesting, my wife started seeing 1234 on clocks to the day at home while I was seeing 911. Now this continued for years until I decided to research this whole subject on my own. As time went on, it would flip. Sometimes I would start seeing 1234 on clocks frequently, and she would see 911 on clocks frequently, and then vice versa, it would flip back and forth. Finally, after much thinking and praying, and research, I believe I have arrived at a possible answer. Now, to answer the questions I have on the screen, first thing, when, when, when did it all start? It, like I said, it started several years ago. Now, the second thing is, where did I see it? Like I say, I saw 9 11 12 34 on clocks, computers, cell phones, microwave clocks, etc. You name it, if it had a clock, I probably saw 9 11 or 12 34 on it at some particular point in time. And the third point is, why did it get my attention? Well, it got my attention because it, because it happened so frequently. The frequency varied throughout the years, and as of this year, 2024, it has started to pick up in frequency again. So, it's, you know, it's, I'm noticing it a lot more now. So I decided to go ahead and make this video, which I should have in retrospect probably years ago. And the fourth thing is, oh, where does it originate? Now, I believe in my heart and through my research that it originates with God. That is my opinion. I could be wrong, but that's what I believe. I, I think only God has the power to ensure someone sees uh, anything he wants whenever he wants them to see it. And this is so strange and so frequent. I've just never experienced anything like this. Now, a real mystery? Yep, it is a real mystery. And given that others are seeing repeating numbers and 9-11, I think this mystery needs to be addressed. That's why I made this video. And uh, there definitely are many questions. I will try to answer some from my research and let the viewers decide what they want to believe. Now I've got the background stuff out of the way, let's proceed on with, with this video and try to arrive at some type of explanation for this phenomenon. Now let's look at some significance of 9-11. 911 is the most famously known as the National Emergency Phone Number in the United States. It's the number people dial in an emergency to get the police, fire department, or an ambulance as needed. So, 911 is a number associated with an emergency or a critical situation or an urgent situation. Also, the date 911 or September 11th, 2001, will forever be associated with the awful attack in New York City on that terrible day. So the date 911 is at least associated with disaster or trouble. Now that's important to keep all this in mind 
as we go forward. Now, let's look at some other significance of 911 in different contexts. It is said 911 is associated with the Kabbalah, or tree of life, or occult knowledge in, in Jewish tradition through gematria, and there is some association with Masonic symbolism. I won't go into detail of all this mysticism, as, as I do not associate myself with this as a Christian who is serving God. Now, the symbol IXXI which is 911 in Roman numerals, is said to have an association as a, as a Masonic symbol. It's associated with the Star of David and is found in some churches. Again, I won't go into all this. You can research this yourself on the internet if you so desire to do so. I just present this as some more things the number 911 may be associated with. Now let's look at some instances of 911 in the Bible. Revelation 911, which I feel is a particularly relevant verse, so remember that later as, as we continue our discussion. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue had his name Apollyon. Abaddon and Apollyon, the angel of the abyss, are all synonyms for God's great adversary, the devil. Also, let's look at Daniel 9-11. Yes, all Israel has transgressed your law and has departed so as not to obey your voice. Therefore, the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, has been poured out on us because we have sinned against him. Let's look at these two examples we've gone over. Revelation 9-11 is associated with basically the devil. And Daniel 9-11 is associated with a curse poured out on Israel because they've sinned against God. So let's keep those two things in mind as we continue our discussion. Now let's examine some more instances of 9-11 in the Bible. Let's look at Job 9-11. If he goes by me, I do not see him. If he moves past, I do not perceive him. Now, like as I've quoted on this page, my opinion, even though God cannot normally be seen, he still knows all things that occurs and will bring even secret things into judgment. Also, most of the world today doesn't know God or have any desire to know God. In one sense, they cannot perceive God's existence because they do not want to know Him, because they want to sin and to indulge the flesh. Let's look at Deuteronomy 9:11, And it came to pass at the end of forty days and forty nights that the Lord gave me two tablets of stone, the tablets of the covenant. And that symbolizes God's judgment on Israel for idolatry. Let's look also at Ezekiel 9:11 refers to the completion of the judgment of God against the wicked while protecting the innocent. Part of verse 9 states, The land is full of bloodshed, and the city full of perversity. Let's look at these examples that we talked about. Job 9-11, Deuteronomy 9-11, Ezekiel 9-11. People ignored God. They didn't care what God thought or tried to serve God. And Deuteronomy 9-11, Ezekiel 9-11, are about judgment of God. So keep that in mind as we continue our discussion about 9-11. Now let's look at some different possibilities about 9-11. According to scholars, it is thought that Jesus was born on God's annual feast day known as the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hanasha, in 5 BC. This is unconfirmed, but it is thought to be the truth by many scholars. And that's 9-11 again, September the 11th, 5 BC. Then let's look at the second example. Jesus' ministry began 9-11, September 11, 26 AD. According to scholars, it is thought that Jesus began his ministry on 9-11, September 11, 26 AD, which was the Day of Atonement in 26 AD. It was the start of the Jubilee year. There is some good evidence to support this claim. So as we see, 9-11 may be very significant. Keep all this in mind as we continue our discussion. Now, let's look at 911 and 911 in the Hebrew, which is the most important. The number 9, Tisha, in Hebrew, is finality, judgment. Number 1 in Hebrew, Akkad, first beginning. And number 11 in Hebrew is Akkad, Esser. Rebellion, betrayal, disorder, judgment. 
remember all this as we continue our discussion. Now let's look at 911 and 911 in Hebrew. This is one interpretation of what I think it could mean. 911 in Hebrew could mean beginning of judgment, or 911 in Hebrew could mean judgment for breaking the law or rebelling against God. Now let's look at 1234 and 1234 in Hebrew. This is one interpretation. 1234 in Hebrew. One could be oneness, unity, beginning. Two, divide, oppose, judge, conflict, choice. Three, seeds, revelation, resurrection. Four, authority, rule, time, kingdom, giving of the law. So, one, two, three, four in Hebrew could mean the beginning of judgment. A choice has to be made, will be revealed, time is here, God has the authority. That's one possible meaning. Keep that in mind as we continue on. Now, while we're examining things in Hebrew, 1, 2, 3, 4, we've already looked at. So that's, now let's look at 12, 34 in Hebrew. This is one interpretation of it. The number 12 could mean perfect government, order, organization, united, holy people serving a holy God. Number 30 can mean life cycle, perfect order. Number four could mean authority, government, rule, dominion, giving of the law and Holy Spirit, and completeness. So, another possible meaning of 1234 in Hebrew, this is one interpretation, is a perfect government will be with perfect order on earth. A law will be given by God, a holy people serving a holy God. It will be complete. So keep this in mind as we continue on. Now, let's look at 9-11 and 1234 taken together at some possible meaning to that. This is like, a, like I said before, this is one interpretation of that. So, 9-11 can mean judgment for breaking the law or rebelling against God. 1-2-3-4 can mean the beginning of judgment, a choice has to be made, will be revealed, time is here, God has the authority. Another possible meaning of 1234 in Hebrew a perfect government will be with perfect order on earth. The law will be given by God. A holy people serving a holy God, it will be complete. Now, taking it all together, what does this mean? Also, i just like to add, when we're considering things, you know, 9 is like an emergency number, a crisis. You know, urgent, an urgent message. You could consider it as that. And then if you look at Revelation 9-11, Daniel 9-11, Deuteronomy 9-11, Ezekiel 9-11, most of that points toward judgment. So the, the Bible verses seem to say judgment as well as the Hebrew meaning of these numbers seem to say judgment. So it all lines up, at least in my opinion, sometimes as judgment. I think we have to consider, we consider the meaning of all this, is if you look at 911, we see judgment. Look at 1234, we see judgment again. So, and we look at 1234, we see like a post judgment earth. That's what it looks like. I'm saying that's just one possible interpretation. It all seems to point to judgment. So, one has to consider if this is coming from God. And I, I, my personal opinion, I think it is. It seems to be a warning preparing us for a judgment of the earth because we all know the earth as a whole, not everybody, but the earth as a whole is rebelling against God. And there's all kinds of ungodliness going on. And the earth as a whole, the people on earth need to repent. So this is a sobering message, I believe. And I do believe, my personal opinion, it is a message from God and one of judgment. So people need to repent. And they need to find God. And they need to find Jesus. And time is running out like it. Like seen in the hourglass. I believe it's running out. That's just my personal opinion. 
all this, in my opinion, leads to one main message. The earth needs to repent, for the hour of judgment may be at hand. I think all that speaks for itself, in my opinion. Considering everything, I think we need to look at the signs of the times. The Bible gave some signs that we know we would know the end is near. So if we look at wars and rumors of wars, we see that going on constantly. More and more wars, it seems like, every day. Natural disasters, that speaks for itself. You know, there's earthquakes, floods, tornadoes. We see that going on every day, forest fires. Persecution of Christians, we see that in certain countries and we see it increasing worldwide. Apostasy, we see that. Depravity, we see that. It's getting more and more all the time. The rise of the Antichrist, you know, there may be multiple Antichrists before the main Antichrist. Peoples against Christ, you know, we look at people in history, you know, like these leaders of these countries, like Hitler, for example. They seem to be like the Antichrist in their behavior. And then, of course, false prophets. We see that rising up. People claim to be God or messengers from God, but a lot of times they're not. Also, you know, the preaching of the gospel. Right now, with satellite, radio, the gospel's reaching places it never reached before. That's one of the signs of the end times. It's reaching, there's a worldwide message of shortwave radio, satellites. So, the signs are indicating, to me at least, that the end uh, time is possibly near. So again, the message that I think needs to be put out is the world needs to repent and turn from evil ways and find Jesus. Like I say, time's running out. That's just my opinion. And again, we see worldwide unrest, riots, worldwide crime, depravity, you know, increasing. And again, like, like I said before, in my opinion, the world as a whole, not everybody, but the world as a whole needs to repent and find Jesus as time may be running out. I think that is the message I get from 9-11 and 12-34 on clocks. That judgment's coming and the world needs to repent. Time's running out. That's my personal opinion on the matter. Now we come to the most important thing, how to be saved. It's the most important thing. And remember, Jesus is the only answer. It's all about Jesus. It's not about what me or you or anybody else does. It's all about what Jesus did. And how to be saved. To hear the gospel, that's the first thing. The second thing is believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And three, repent of the sins. Be sorry for one's sins. That's very important. And confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Be baptized, and sixth, and final thing is remain faithful to God through everything. If you'll do those simple things, that's how a person gets saved. And it's the most important thing you would ever do in your life.